Hey, what's up you guys? It's just Jordan here today. I wanted to explain sort of my background and my story of how I went from working a corporate job to playing professional basketball in the NBA G League. So basically my story is I grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I played high school basketball. Got to have a Division One scholarship to Texas A&M. Played there for four years. It was a great time. Got to play with a lot of great players during my years. NBA All-Stars, NBA you know, players. After college, I decided to not play. I ended up working for EY, which is a uh, top four accounting firm, and I was working in downtown Dallas. And I'm starting to realize less and less that it's no longer about right or wrong. It's about, you know, what's the best thing for you? What's smart? What's wise? I believe that, you know, God is with you uh, wherever you go. Looking back on my decision of not playing basketball the first two years out of college, I believe it was a wise decision. Me and my wife got to create a great uh, foundation for our marriage and it definitely made us stronger. You know, got to be plugged into a great church and uh, built some great relationships there the first two years um, when we were living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Within that first year of working, I actually started working out slowly after work with one of my good friends, Dadrian, and uh, we would be shooting, working out, and this that bug just kept on you know staying there and I ended up doing an open tryout for a team called the Erie Bayhawks so I went to an open tryout for them I made the training camp roster and I ended up getting cut at training camp you know I had a, a, a chip on my shoulder going into that training camp and I don't think it was rightfully so I think I should have been more grateful to be there you know I wanted to prove myself and, and kind of be you know, not necessarily an alpha, but wanting to at least be um, demonstrative on what I'm trying to do. And I don't think that was the right approach to approach any tryout. So I ended up getting cut from that team in Erie, Pennsylvania, and then went back to work. That was really depressing for me, really sad. Actually went through some times where, you know, I'll be up late at night just praying to God and, you know, talking with my wife and decide, trying to decide, hey, is this really for me? But once I got a taste of that life and once I got a taste of, you know, I think I can do this. I know what I need to work on. I started, you know, working out again. I went back to work um, at that same company. You know, they welcomed me back. Within that next year, it was that time again around October and I knew the tryouts were happening all across the country in G League gyms. And so I was just trying to figure out, you know, who to try out with. And I definitely wanted to at least stay at home. So I wanted to try out with the Texas Legends. So I showed up and there were about 200 people, guys who I'd played with at the division, at the division one level to guys that I've literally seen at gyms or, or never seen before in my life, you know, who barely knew how to shoot a basketball. And, you know, how to stand out during that time was, was really interesting for me. I just wanted to play my game and be myself. And so I was aggressive. I was shooting the ball, you know, attacking the rim, doing the things that I had worked on um, when I was, you know, uh, still working at my job. But at this time, I went all in. I put in a 30-day notice with my, my company and I had moved me and my wife had moved from our apartment in Irving to my parents' house. This was the moment, this was the time that my life was gonna shift. And you know, my wife had my back, my parents had my back, my friends did as well. And so I just wanted to go full force into basketball. And so what ended up happening was at that Dallas Mavericks tryout, I didn't make it. And you know, I, I didn't even make it to training camp and I was really discouraged by that because the reason wa wasn't because I wasn't good enough, it's just because I wasn't a good fit. Realizing that um, when you're trying out for teams or anything in life, you may not just be a good fit for that specific organization, but that doesn't mean that you don't belong. So I was a little bit discouraged by that. I had to wait a whole another week to try out for another team. And honestly, uh, my backup plan for not making the Texas Legends was to go to Canada and play in their league. I had already almost signed a, a contract with them, but wanted to wait one more week because there was another team that I wanted to try out with, and that was the Austin Spurs. What I ended up doing was, you know, working out that whole week, not even thinking about trying out for them, but I knew that the tryout was there. And so I think the trial was on a Saturday and it was a Friday night and me and my, my dad were up talking and my dad was like, hey, just sleep on it. And if you want to go to the tryout, you know, just let me know in the morning. And I just figured, you know, if I wake up with that energy, you know, and, and I know I need to go, we'll just do it. And so my wife told me before I went to sleep that you need to go. But I, you know, I, I had to want it for myself. I woke up that morning and there was just a spark in my heart. Me and my dad drove down from Dallas to Austin. You know, I didn't do a pre-registration, so I had to, you know, bring a check to, to the gym to pay that $150 to try out. But what I didn't know is checks weren't allowed. So I was one of the last guys in the gym. My dad was just waiting in the car, finishing up some work. 
and I walked into the gym and I said, hey, this is my check. You know, here's my information. I fill out the information. You know, the lady behind the desk said, hey, we actually don't accept checks. I was one of the last people and the camp was about to start within like 15 minutes. I talked to her and I just said, what can I do to, to get this money? I had, you know, one of the people from the organization with Austin Spurs drove me right across the street to a ATM at like a Walgreens, took some money out came back, paid in cash, and I was one of the last people there, so I had to get the biggest shirt because the normal sizes had went away. I was wearing like a triple X t-shirt. I think the main three things that most teams are looking for if you're wanting to try out for an open tryout is someone who can play their role and, and be confident in that and then be able to know what team that you're actually playing for. So what I mean by that is do your research. And so if you're at you know, the Austin Spurs tryout or if you're at a certain team's tryout, understand what their team makeup is. Understand what they're really looking for. So with the Spurs, I know that they were looking for ball movement. I know that they were looking for defense. I know they were looking for uh, intelligent plays. And so what I wanted to do was just guard one of the best players there, you know, try to shut him down and, and move my feet. I wanted to knock down open threes. Um, and then I wanted to make smart decisions on the court, you know, pass it to the open man, uh, just make the extra play, make the extra pass. And you know, if you're going for another team, maybe they're looking for a different style. I didn't want to come down and shoot the ball every time and show that I could score because, you know, that's not the way that they play. What I did best was um, just understand that I can attack the rim, I can be athletic, and so I just wanted to show my athleticism. Every chance I could get, I was going up for a rebound. Every chance that I could get, I was, you know, running the floor, trying to be vocal, trying to be even a leader in the open tryout setting. So it was fun. I, I, I had fun there, but I didn't have any expectations because I went down and I just said, hey, you know, I already have my backup plan in Canada, but I might as well try out for, for the Spurs. And after the tryout, I actually uh, got stopped by the general manager and he said, hey, before you go, um, let's get your information. We want to invite you to training camp. And it was so casual, but it was a very monumental moment for, for me and good validation, honestly, to, to of my hard work and uh, realizing that, man, the hard work does pay off. You know, made the team at training camp and training camp is just a whole nother level up from the tryout because you know, those guys are all, you know, high level players and we're all competing for a slim number of spots because a lot of teams, they already have their, their teams picked out. You have to really fit your role. You have to really do your research and you have to really be confident in your own abilities. And so at that training camp, that first year in 2017, you know, I wanted to show those same things that I did at the open trial, be athletic, be vocal, be confident you know, make the extra pass, play defense. It was it was fun, it was interesting. Um, you know, I, I didn't know if I was gonna make the team or not. You know, one of my best friends in the whole wide world was on that training camp team as well, and that's Daniel Alexander. And we, we both were praying, you know, every night because we were staying at a hotel, you know, just waiting to see if we were gonna, you know, make the team. You know, I, I wrote down on my list, you know, each guy, each position, and try to figure out, okay, can I, you know, how, how am I gonna be able to fit in and make uh, this team? At the end of the week, um, I ended up making the team and they brought me from San Antonio where we did the training camp to Austin and it was great. Um, I was really excited from the year. That whole year was really uh, a blur for me. A lot of things that happened to me personally, but we ended up winning the, the G League championship. It was the first year that it was the NBA G League and we ended up winning that championship and it was great. And uh, you know, the things that I understood and took away from the journey, just believing in yourself and betting on yourself. You know, a good friend of ours, you know, told us that, you know, it, it took a while for me to want to do that because if you don't have belief in yourself, it's going to be hard to bet on yourself. And the only way to believe in yourself is to put that work in and to know that there are things that you can pull out of yourself when it's time. So, you know, if I wasn't ever working on my game, if I wasn't ever, you know, lifting weights or running, I couldn't believe in myself because I didn't put the work in. When I realized that, yeah, I, I did put the work in, I knew I could bet on myself. And so that consistent work uh, before work, when I was, you know, at EY, uh, during work, during lunchtime, when I would, you know, take my lunch break, drive over to the gym, you know, get 150 shots up really quick and then come back to work, um, you know, and then, after work, you know, staying late at the gym, you know, I was really doing uh, all I could to prepare myself uh, to play basketball again. And that's when I knew I could bet on myself. So that was the biggest, you know, takeaway uh, for me during this journey is to believe in yourself and bet on yourself. My final point that I wanted to make was to encourage you guys to, to let your story drive you. I had no business, you know, working in corporate America and then going to, to play in the NBA G League, in the NBA Summer League, and having a shot to play in the NBA. I believe that we are all capable of accomplishing our dreams. 
if we stay consistent, if we believe in ourselves and bet on ourselves. You know, whatever your dream is, I just wanna encourage you and, and I want you to understand that, you know, uh, why not you? Uh, let your story drive you and bet on yourself. Uh, Jordan Green signing out. Thank you guys for watching.